You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. Welcome to Tabletop Arcanum. We're your hosts, Justin. And Ricky, and this week, where'd you come from, where'd you go, where'd you come from, Cotton Eye Joe, that's right, we're going to be talking about gaming on the go. I I'm waiting for reaction. I really just kind of want to escape the window in this room right now. Just accept it. Just to escape from you, and that really bad joke. But yeah, you know, gaming on the go, that's a thing. Gaming on the go. You recently had a trip, so. Yeah, you recently had a trip, so, you know, maybe you have a little fresh experience on that. But before we go into that, uh, roll recap. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yes, yeah, sir. So why don't I go first, because I already kind of did a half roll recap without you. Sorry. Yeah, thanks. Well, you were in Jamaica and doing... Jamaica... Things. Mm-hmm. So really, the only thing I've played since uh, our special episode on Fate Forge was um, a game of Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. Where I was tied up, trapped in a basement of a cultist, and everything went well until we got to the uh, the main floor and out of the basement. That you just kind of described my vacation to Jamaica. That was pretty intense. Yeah, it did not it did not go well after that, and we did not win. I'm willing to try it again, but uh, that was rough. Nah. rough. You played some of the D and Ds. Multiple games. Yeah. That I, I mean, it's been, what, like three days, four days since you recorded without me, so you... Uh... There was some D&D going on. Yeah. Um, I guess the best one was the, the all-day session of two different games back-to-back where we started with breakfast, broke for lunch between games, played again, broke for dinner, played some more. I would say Eventually I... Eventually went home. I'm pretty sad I missed Technically that. Technically all in the same day. I'm sad I missed that. I'm always a fan of brunch or breakfast before gaming. Then, you know, breaking for breakfast, brunch, and brinner. Big fan of breakfast. Yep. So, that is my roll recap. Pretty light. Yeah. So, did you actually get to play anything while you were out out of of the country, or? I did. I did. Um, So, we played, I played Arkham Horror, uh, the card game with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to count it because I still played technically a board game, but I played some Ticket to Ride on my iPad while on the airplane with my girlfriend. We were able to uh, hand it back and forth. Yep. Uh, Hostage Negotiator uh, by Van Ryder Games. That was, that was a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Good. I played a lot of timeline uh, music and cinema. Uh, so that was uh, a good choice to bring with me. Um, other than that, I had to figure out how to play games by myself. So I did play some some solitaire. I just played solitaire. Spider solitaire. Mm. Regular solitaire. Free cell? Yep. Mm. Um, Those are some classics. And then yesterday I played a few games of Quelf. It's been a long time since I played Quelf. Yeah. Sun, uh, fun, super fast game. Yep. Yeah. One of those weird party games. You gotta be the right crowd for it. Because mm-hmm. um, you can technically win that game by not doing anything. You take the ones, you know, like if you like don't want to act a card out, you have you go a space back. Mm-hmm. But since you're rolling like a D6 every time you're rolling forward, mm-hmm. you can move faster than you're taking penalties. Oh, I never know that. I didn't know that was a rule. Oh, there you go. Yep. It's a thing. I broke. Well, the addition I played, like, it wasn't just acting stuff out. You had to answer questions. If you didn't answer questions, you got right. to push back. Or... So so for your in, introvert-style people that don't want to do, like, the, the act-out games or charades mm-hmm. or things of that nature or drawing, and they just want to answer trivia questions, you do that part. And you, then the crazy, like, put this box under your shirt for the rest of the game. You leave that out. And you take that penalty. Hmm. Yeah. And then you can win still. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, there were penalties that, well, 
I don't know if I play a different version than you, but there'll be like a three space penalty. There'll be a lot of space penalties. Mm-hmm. Eh. I like to have fun, Justin. I know. I'm a fun guy. And there's other people out there that don't get into those sorts of games, and I'm just saying that's kind of a mixed game because it's a little bit of everything. I'm the type of man that people don't call me sir without adding you're making a scene after it. So that's right up my alley, and I can see how it's not other people's alley, but, I, you know, I enjoyed it. Yep. What else you got? Well, that was it. So we're going to move on to the news. Uh, you did a lot, or you did pretty much everything that would have came out in the last two weeks in the last episode, except for our personal news. We have hit a thousand downloads, so the sound you're about to hear is a high five. Ticket, 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 ticket. Thank you all for listening, especially to that high five. I know there was a lot of build up to it, but we got it. Um, other than that, you know. I saw that Ticket to Ride is being adapted into a live action TV Actually, show. I don't know if it's a live action. Oh, no. No, it's a live oh, action a live TV action. show. Okay. Yes. Well, Ticket to Ride, the TV show, coming to something eventually on a small screen near you. Um, yeah, so I saw this and I'm like, Ticket to Ride, the TV show, what's going on? So think of it as The Great Race. Hmm. Or, like, The Amazing Race, those those sort of, like, global trotting challenge shows. Mm -hmm. They're using Ticket to Ride to kind of theme it on trains. Oh. So it's going to be kind of one of the contest shows. That made more sense to me than, like, I thought they were going to go for, like, a TV series kind of like Battleship did with the movie. Or they no. just kind of made some stuff up and won and, it. And ran with it. No. Yeah. No, not that bad, but it's still a little weird. Still a lot. Still a lot. Um, we're one month away from Gen Con. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Less than one month. Um, we are recording on the first right now, and we leave. on the Well, Gen Con starts on the first. It starts on the first, but we will be there before. Right, because we'll be there for the fancy flight thing and... Uh, Checking in that day early. Just let me be excited for this, Justin. I know. I'm so pumped. Yeah, it'll be great. We got our tickets in the mail. Yep. Badges in hand. Tickets of, in hand. One of our friends won or got the golden ticket, got a free pass yeah. for next year. Yep, free badge for next year. So they do exist. We have personal proof. I didn't get one. You didn't get one. But maybe they'll uh, invite us as media next year. You never know. When we hit 2,000 downloads. 2,000 whole downloads. Oh, yeah, that means that we're coming up to our one-year uh, anniversary here soon, too. Uh, Two months. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Because we did the Gen Con stuff, and then it took a lot of figuring out of how we're going to do a podcast if to talk guys, about it a month later. If you guys don't realize by now, we're kind of winging it at all times. I think we're doing okay. We're doing better than a year ago, which That's we didn't true. have an episode a year ago. Yeah. Nah, that's true. We, we're just a twinkle in our eye. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kickstarter-wise, um, Fate Forge, as I talked about last week, uh, is still going on. They just breached about 60K. So it's funded. It's happy. Um, stretch goals are on the way. The great benefit is that... Um, for those in the states going to Gen Con, you can back and get your Gen your books at Gen Con. They still have that available. The biggest stretch goal that they reached, um, the map of the free city, is going to be out, and then that's going to be included for everybody. They're also throwing in the uh, art prints, so you can actually have the uh, Adventures Grimoire. Um, uh, art prints as well as they still have that scenario by Ed Greenwood so all of that's on stretch goals that have already been hit and then next up um, we're already halfway there on the on their campaign for it well hold on real quick I just want to also throw it out there I was gone when you gotta look at all the Fate Forge stuff and coming back and looking at all this art I do have to say people just go out there and, and take a look it's it's gorgeous. Yep. The art is beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, but 
they, as uh, Clovis and I were talking about it on the last episode, the next unveiled stretch goal when they hit uh, another 10K, so when they hit 70,000 US, mm-hmm. is having the Sirenscape sound boards available for the world. Oh. So anyone who backs will get access to those and be added to their um, siren, uh, Sirenscape accounts. And they do tease that there is a 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th stretch goals. They just haven't said what those are or what dollar amounts they need to be. But they have uh, still about two weeks left, so plenty of time to jump in, plenty of time to keep going. And I'm really cheering on Studio Gate because this is a beautiful book and hope the best for them. It's gorgeous. I'm just enthralled with this art. Now, let's talk a little bit before we get Game on the go. You said it's it's already July, so it's been six months. We're halfway through the year. We made some challenges early in for cue, our, cue the Bon Jovi in the beginning, so we're halfway there. Well, where are you on your ten by ten challenge, Ricky? My ten by ten challenge. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got eighteen played out of the hundred. Ah, I only have sixteen. Ha ha! Um, because of the dedication to Gloomhaven, I have knocked Gloomhaven off the ten by ten. It is the only one knocked off the 10 by 10. So I haven't knocked anything off the 10 by 10 yet. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. I've got a lot of ones, twos. I just have to kind of focus down and play the games I selected. Mm-hmm. A lot of other stuff. As you'll notice on my other challenges, play 50 new games. I'm already at 37 for the year, and I haven't even gone to Gen Con yet. I'm at 13. So. I need to get on that. See, my problem is... I do think I need to start remembering to record it or record what I play Mm. because like when we sat down, I'm like, what did I play over the last week and started putting everything in here? Right. Not that I'm saying that I should, I'm lower than I am because I'm probably not because I like to play. Well, I'm voluntold that we're going to be playing Harry Potter a lot. So that's a lot. 90% of my day or 90% of everything. And then the uh, third challenge I had for myself personally was uh, play more games, which was 350 plays of stuff mm-hmm. throughout the year. I am on trend to making it. Uh, currently, uh, let's see, we have 183 days left. I have 173 to go. I'm about 10 ahead for one a day. And when I do my marathon sessions of like, this day I just binge play something. It helps mm. keep up for the couple of days I don't. Yeah. So I'm sitting at sixty four um plays right now, which means I'm forty two percent through there. Ooh. I'm probably Pick up the speed. I'd probably technically I mean, I, I would probably say over the last six months I may have missed eight games. I should probably be around that fifty mark. So as long as I remember to keep actually putting them in there, there you I go. should hit it by the end. There you go. Uh, and you know, we're going to Gen Con, so... Yeah, there'll be a lot of games and at Gen we, Con to play. Uh, we picked up the all-night game pass, so we can play... Yeah, get access to the library, sit mm-hmm. in the Lucos Oil Stadium, and play games until we pass out. Oh, I'm so excited. Yep. So, that uh, is kind of our Kickstarter stuff, our new stuff, our challenge update. So if you're doing challenges, uh, definitely hit us up on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Email us if you like at tabletoparcanum at gmail.com. Let us know where you are in your challenges. I'd like to hear and see if uh, you're trending with us or you've already met your goals and are doing your own stretch goals for the year. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But to our main topic. Which is? Gaming on the go. Okay. Go, go. No. Power gaming? No. No. Do, 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 do. No. No, no, no. Stop go, that. Go, power gaming. I'm going to throw something at you. So, uh, when it comes to gaming on the go. Yep. The first thing I would always suggest, this being new on my mind, is make sure to have a willing participant. 
<laughs> or, or have a lot of solo games. Or pack solo games. So the majority of my games I brought on my vacation last week uh, were multiplayer games. And my girlfriend is always up to playing games. But when she's on vacation, she's up to wanting to enjoy the vacation, be out, be in the sun. Other activities. Exactly, exactly. So She I, is not a basement dweller like us. Yeah, exactly. So she, um, we played a lot of um, Timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, just being, just knowing who you're going to be with and what games would be geared towards them. I wouldn't be able to bring Harry Potter on a plane with me or Mm -mm. I wouldn't really want to bring it to Jamaica because that's a large game to set up and it's a lot of effort to make sure everything's there. And And so the, the footprint of the game itself is a little decent. So yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. I wouldn't want necessarily pack and, uh, take along. Uh, Twilight Imperium for very similar reasons. Um, so yeah, keep in mind where you're going, what you're going to be doing, who you're going to be with. Definitely big factors of what games to pack. Um, did you encounter any fun at the airport? Oh, you know I did because uh, it's definitely the airport. Um, so we got back from our vacation uh, and we were in North Carolina and it was raining and they wouldn't bring our bags out of the um our checked bags out so we had to wait for them and we couldn't necessarily walk into like an open area because we were in customs so Hmm. everyone's sitting there all bored and that's when good old ricky decided to pull out timelines and everyone just jumped straight into it it was a ton of fun uh if you're not familiar with timelines timelines is a game where you have, um, in the version I played, uh, music and cinema, mm-hmm. it's songs or movies. You have one side that is just the picture of it, and the other side is the picture and it has the year, and you have to correctly guess where in the timeline this came out. Did it come out before this movie? Did it come out after this song? Um, so it's a lot of trying to figure out where everything is. Um, it was an easy game to get a big group into. Uh, it, yep. It's uh, for two to eight players. You could probably play it with more people than that, but then once you start putting a lot of people in there, you start getting a really long timeline, and it just starts getting a little chaotic. Um, but definitely having games like that for when you're with a big group and you get stuck somewhere definitely helps out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so you 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 got the good experience of the airport and gaming, where you had something to do while you're waiting mm-hmm. for your your stuff, or if you got a big um ten hour layover or something ridiculous, where you, your flight's not technically canceled, but it's so far you've got to figure out something to keep yourself from going crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, some pack games or. Are going to save yourself a little bit there. Um, when I went to uh, Reno for Gamma, and um, went down to um, a couple other trips I've done, packing games in a backpack like decks of cards and thick mm-hmm. stacks of cardboard. Definitely make sure you pull those out or have those easily accessible because once they uh, run them through an x-ray scanner and see a big block that they can't see through because it's just dense cardboard, TSA has some questions for you. Mm-hmm. And, then, and it'll it'll definitely pad that into your time. So just something I noticed. Mm-hmm. Um, I know. It's nothing really bad. It just You, you just got to factor the fact that they may need to take a look at your bag. I know personally um, I went on a business trip and mm-hmm. we were supposed to have a bi-weekly game night uh, for a tabletop game that we were playing. Mm-hmm. And I brought my bag of dice. Yep. And just to forewarn you, if you bring a bag of dice, people are going to think it's candy for some reason. TSA is hmm. going to think it's candy. And they're going to proceed to pour it out <laughs> all over the, the little metal tray. And they go everywhere. So make sure to factor that in, too. Let them know what they're getting into, because I did not expect that. I, Lots of chasing down dice in the airport. Wow. Yeah. Hadn't had not experienced that one yet. That was fun. Good to know. Yeah. Um, 
But the other thing that I noticed when Game Man Go, and again, traveling usually by air, you can do yourself a big favor by zip locking and bagging games and taking away a lot of the uh, boxes. Because mm-hmm. a lot of games are not designed to be space conscious when it comes to like minimizing like timeline's a great example. Throw in a little plastic ziploc and you're good to go. You don't need to take the whole tin or cardboard box because it doesn't really fill up much of that box. I mean, it's about the size. It's a little bit thicker than a size of a regular deck of playing cards. Right. Um, but a third of the size. Mm-hmm. So the tin is. Is pretty sizable. It's it's pretty big. Also, I mean, you don't want to take a tin on you, anyways, because they see tins and bags, and they're gonna to want to open that up. And yep. Spill um, out your cards everywhere. Yeah. So, what was the other good one? I did backpack in Mansions of Man the Second Edition when it came out, because I was uh I was on a business trip. Got a uh, vacation trip home. Temporarily for a weekend. Got the game because it came out. And I was really jazzed for it. Brought it back to me uh, on the business trip to play with my, at that time, roommate. Because that's all, let's face it, I just was like, I need to play this game, need to play mm. this game, need to play this game. And I was able to fit Mansions of Madness core box in, in, in like a weekend's worth of clothes and stuff, all in a backpack. Mm. Now, I did take some considerations. I didn't take any of the monster figurines. I just took the cardboard squares for Mm -hmm. them. It doesn't look as pretty on the table, but I had the information I needed to play the game without taking extra weight and extra stuff with me. So always look at what your game can maybe do without that makes it more presentable and more fun to play with, but not necessarily add a required element. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I did take the investigator minis, but there was only like eight of them at the time, and a little zipback bag of eight little plastic figures. Pretty easy to take. Yeah. The giant gallon bag worth of monsters, on the other hand, not so much. Yeah. And you want to make sure, if you're going to be bringing something with a lot of tiny pieces, that you do something to make sure you don't lose all those little tiny pieces. Mm-hmm. Because nothing's more unfortunate than having a game you really love to the point that you want to take it with you. And you lose all of one type of piece for the game, yep. like your resource tokens or what have you. And now you either have to go find a new game or go out and buy uh, separate tokens. Sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Um, another suggestion um, would go back to our one of our previous episodes. Um, Gaming in other forms. So, like I said, I I did Ticket to Ride on the iPad. Yep. Me and my girlfriend love Ticket to Ride. I would never take that with me on a plane or take it anywhere because it is a lot of small pieces. It's a lot of... Mm -hmm. uh, It'd be... Takes up space, takes up weight. Mm -hmm. And while you may have a more rewarding time on the analog board game, Mm -hmm. the the, digital version is going to be much better. Mm. Uh, speaking of digital versions, uh, while you were out, Catan came out. Oh, it's out on the Switch now? And VR. Oh. Yeah. Oh, did you pick that up? Maybe. I'm sorry. We're ending this episode early. I've got to go experience <laughs> the, the future. Catan VR. <laughs> it's kind of like if I played it right in front of me right now, but not. Right. So... Well, that's not as portable, but digital board games are definitely becoming a bigger piece, mm. and they're doing a lot better job doing like a one-to-one transition. So mm. um, we've talked in our digital gaming episode, we definitely talked a lot about those, um, but to kind of recap, uh, some of my favorites that went digital, um, Sentinels in the Multiverse mm. is very good digital. Uh, the Dresden Files. Uh, Card game is also a very solid digital game. Uh, Ticket to Ride, Lords of Waterdeep, um, Catan now, Suro. Um, Pandemic isn't bad digitally, but I would definitely suggest making sure you have like a tablet because um, you need 
a little bit of a bigger screen for that one. It's coming out on the Switch too, isn't it? Yep. On the Switch, it may be okay depending on how like zooming controls work. Mm-hmm. But I know on my like my iPhone, it was not really yeah. ideal. I brought my I brought my iPad with me, and we put a bunch of games on there. So that's that's where we played it. And yeah, definitely, especially if you're playing with other people, make sure to have a tablet, um, uh, if only for your eyes. Yep. Uh, Elder Sign made a very good uh, app version. Oh yeah, I have that. Um, Lanterns has a very good app version. Mm-hmm. And then um, the other one, um, AEG's Cat Lady, it's kind of a mix and match cat game. Mm. Pretty popular, very light, very easy to play. Um, also works very good as an app. So those are all sorts of good games to grab on the go and take with you. Um, they also have those escape rooms in a box. Mm. Those are usually very light, very easy, and realistically... If you grab one of the um, exit games that are like one shots, mm-hmm. take it with you out on your trip, play it on your trip, leave it, leave it because you're coming back with souvenirs or other stuff, and you usually have more stuff coming back than you do mm-hmm. on the way out, so it, it'll free up some uh, some luggage space for you. Yeah. So that's kind of what I've got on gaming on the go. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Just. Make sure to have fun. Make sure not to spend all your time. Um, if you, if you're on vacation and you're you're out, don't spend twenty four hours straight gaming. Make sure to go see what you can, went out there to see. Um, getting up and taking a stroll every once in a while will help. But yeah, definitely, it's a lot better than sitting in your hotel room watching TV. Um, mm-hmm. It's a lot better than sitting in, on your vacation on your phone. It's a nice break from your vacation. I know sometimes and some people like myself can't always be doing something. Sometimes I want to go back to the room and I want to just kind of decompress for a little bit. Yep. Being able to sit down and, and play that game really made the vacation so much more enjoyable. So it was me decompressing, but also me staying mentally active. Um, I was going to say when uh, wife and I went out on an all-inclusive trip, uh, I took TAC. I took a couple other games, and we actually took it out to, like, one of the bars and just kind of sat in the lounge playing a game and having drinks. That's fun. Like, not necessarily brought to us, but definitely, like, a short walk over, like, six feet, mm-hmm. grab another round, and then go back to another game. Yeah. Um, I also had, like, pool tables and stuff that we messed around with, too. So, definitely, in- like you said, enjoy where you are. Um games are good for traveling as far as car trips train trips getting stuck in the airport for 12 hours straight Mm -hmm. um and just kind of killing time on a flight because i can't sleep on a plane personally Mm -hmm. um a little too anxious and i just not i'm a tall guy and a broad shoulder guy i don't fit in planes yeah so, I'm the same way too, yeah. So I just can't ever really get comfortable. The only time I've ever slept on a plane realistically was um was like a thirteen hour flight and I really had no choice. I eventually just passed out. I had all the leg room. My flight got cancelled, so that w- bro or was a part of the, us playing that uh timeline at the airport. Um there was about sixteen of us, so half of us broke off and just started playing board games. Um, oh, you know, we also played Five Second Rule, which, I mean, is a deck of cards, and then... Oh, I was expecting you to find, like, airport food and drop it on the floor and see who would grab it. <laughs> and then, who would actually eat it? You'd be surprised. Mostly me, but... That's not surprising. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, my, my flight got canceled, so it was nice to have a backup plan so that not all of us were just sitting there miserable waiting to figure out what was going to happen. True, uh, true. And I'll tell you something. They rebooked our flight, and both times I sat in the first row behind first class, and I had all the leg room. But you don't have anything to, like, store a laptop or tablet in front of you if you want. I did you notice do, that. You do. It's so far away, and the tray tables Oh, are the flights not... I've done that mm-hmm. didn't have anything. Mm. Yeah, it was weird. 
Uh, and then the tray tables come out of the armrest, and they, yep. they do not fit me very well. I've got a large lap, and uh, yep. yeah, very uncomfortable. But, yeah, I got to stretch out on the way home, and it was fantastic. Yep. Uh, those rows, exit rows, are the other ones if you, if, mm-hmm. if you can. Now, what I have noticed recently, a couple years ago, they were the same price. Now they seem to have caught on, and those are like premium seats. They're mm-hmm. not like a huge upcharge, but there's still an upcharge for them. Like 11 to $30 or something right. like that. Mm. So, not a bad thing, but definitely a thing. Yeah, if you guys know of any games for traveling, I travel all the time. Yeah. Justin travels quite a bit, too. Mm-hmm. Um, let us know. Again, hit us up on, on social media. Email us. What's your favorite game on the go? Yeah. Let us uh, let us know, and yeah, well, we are always looking for more games. I'm looking for... I'd love to find a game that I could play on a tray table. Like, I don't have mm-hmm. small... Oh, you know what? I forgot to bring the Kickstarter I backed. Um, Bar Pigs? No, not Bar Pigs. Um, Micro Brew. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I should have brought that because that's a that's a game that's in the side or like it's like I think two or four coasters, and then the rest of it fits into an Altoids tin. Right, I like guess it's a it was tiny des- game. It was designed to go to bars. Yeah. Um, I guess the only other thing before we wrap up, and this is kind of just a touch base again. You were doing uh, Hunt a Killer with your girl with the girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Any yeah. update? We got halfway through it. Um, one day we will finish it. Okay. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, it's a lot of... I'm trying to say, think of how to explain it. It's just a lot of puzzles. And some puzzles seem like they're puzzles, but they're not puzzles. And they'll later be puzzles. And Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So I have all six boxes. Uh, we've gotten through three of them. Okay. Um, so me and her just have to find some time to actually sit down with the rest of them and, and go through them. Nice. Yeah. Well, that does it for Gaming on the Go. I think uh, we talked enough about that. And with last week's episode and trimming up our news a little bit. Sorry, Ricky. Uh, it's okay. I had to strike okay. when the iron's hot. Hey, man, I was, I was on a beach somewhere. I didn't have much internet access to check. So You were pretty happy. Yeah. Wherever you were. Yeah. Um, so next episode, we talked about how we completed it, but let's talk about the review of Betrayal Legacy. Yes, sir. And whether it's a game for you, um, the review episode, we will be as spoiler free as we can, um, relatively to our experiences. Uh, but when we have our special episodes, leasing soon mm-hmm. for our actual play of it uh, those will be spoiler heavy as and i will definitely make sure we mark those episodes as spoiler heavy mm-hmm. um, but the review shouldn't have to worry about it we'll keep it on the light side and talk more mechanics and things that we've encountered more than anything else mm-hmm. so stay tuned till next time on tabletop arcanum this is justin and this is ricky and Go outside sometime. Bring a board game with you, though. You Jamaican me crazy. I always do. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, hosted by Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, and featuring the original music by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. As always, thanks for listening.